Welcome by a new live stream. Let's see if it's working. Oh. Welcome by a new live stream. Let's see if it's working. Both my laptops are not. Uh, both my laptops need to be reinstalled. They are not working with the browser. So let's see if I can see the chat on my mobile phone. Okay, I'm seeing that I'm live. Okay, the chat is working on my phone. Hey, how are you doing, uh, Mark? I'm fine. Yes, I'm back. So, we gonna live stream, and while I'm live streaming, I gonna test out a lot of uh, old hardware. I have here some hard drives that I gonna test, and here's a full box of hardware that I still need to test out. So let's see what we have. And of course you can ask me questions if you want and then we can chat and uh, chat and talk about stuff. Here we have all kinds of laptop hard drives. Oh, this box is heavy. Let's see what we have here. Some SCSI cards, network cards. Promise uh, IDE controllers, network cards, some sound cards, more SATA cards, the Pentium V motherboard from uh, from the last video with the uh, open cases. Here's some broken P2B from my test machine, and a 486 motherboard. Uh, Pentium 133 motherboard Another Pentium motherboard More hard drives More hard drives a video card, this is a, um, let me see, a Viper 50, a 60 megabyte HP, and I think I have three of these cards now. So that's pretty nice. Is the sound uh, uh, okay? Here is a video card. Some more network cards. Another laptop hard drive, some memory, some uh, newer uh, HP video cards, more hard drives, more memory sticks, another laptop hard drive. Another 486 motherboard. Some CD-ROM drives. <laughs> I like how he speaks Kusi. <laughs> we need to make a uh, Kusi episode so I can say the whole damn video Kusi. More memory sticks, of course more hard drives, more CD players, look a Quantum Bigfoot, we, I think we are gonna start with this one, I want to see if it is still working because that will be a miracle. And even more hard drives. 
and this hard drive is already tested so that's good and some more memory modules and the rest in here is not that important Bigfoot is gone okay now my table is full <laughs> Let's organize it a little bit. So this is my test machine. It's running an uh, Asus P2B motherboard with a Pentium 2 350 MHz. And I use it to test all my hardware. So all the hardware that's unknown to me, I first put it in uh, this machine. Uh, so I don't blow up uh, good motherboards and uh, I have one machine to try it out and to be honest this is motherboard number three and I already had two motherboards died in my test machine but they all were already motherboards with tiny issues like not stable anymore in windows or um, the other P2B just died on me so that's not a big loss because it's a test machine and it will save other hardware. So I don't need to put a broken piece of hardware in a working machine. <laughs> hey Dave, I got a rare Quantum Pro Drive LPS. It's fully working from 92. Nice. I think the Pro Drive. Uh, Pro Drive series is not the best, so that it is working is pretty great. Nice. So let's uh, let's try out this Quantum Bigfoot, and this drive is let me see. Oh, it's 1.2 gigabyte. It's a 128080. So it's one of the earlier Quantum Bigfoot drives, and this will be nice in a late 486 build, early Pentium one build. If you don't need speed, because the these drives are really really slow. I think they uh, the rotation speed is 1306 RPM, so not that great. Let me see where are the jumpers. Uh, SPDSCS DS yes master. Let me see where is this. I hope it's the right orientation because there's no knots on the IDE cable. Okay, let's start up the system. And in the CD-ROM drive, I have an Ultimate Boot CD. <laughs> Als iemand dit kan lezen, ga ik lachen. <laughs> I think there are some Dutch people here on the channel. Okay, uh, we are in the Ultimate Boot CD. Let's go to the hard drive section. Then we go to Diagnostics. And my favorite tool to use on all IDE hard drives is the C tools for DOS version 1.12. Let's see if it starts up. Yes, we have a working mouse that makes it easier. Okay, the drive is detected, smart is not supported. And let's do the short test. And let's hope this is a working drive. For now, it looks alright, so let's hope there are no bad sectors or errors on this drive. And all the drive with errors, all, uh, also if it gives smart errors, I just dump it because I have more than 130 drives so I don't have to save every single drive and I rather dump out the drives that have problems. I 
has a Terminator PC. Look above there. There it is. On top of the on top of the stack. But to be honest, the Asus Terminator build is not uh, my greatest uh, or my favorite build. Uh, I think this Bigfoot has an error. <laughs> Errors detected on short test. It is uh, suggested that you run the long test to do a more in-depth test. Press any key to close this window. But the test has failed, so... I don't gonna spend more time on this drive because most quantum bigfoots are dead. I have a few that are working, but mm, I think more than 80% of the drives have errors. Let's see what we have here. We have a Seagate media. We have a Seagate meta list. Uh, 8.6 gigabyte hard drive. Let's see where the what the jumpers are. Oh here. Single drive. Yes, it's already on master. Uh, in the testing, I will focus on the smaller capacity drives because an 120 and a 160 gigabyte drive will take too much time to test. <laughs> throw it away! Next! Safety controller! I never throw quantum Bigfoots away. Even the broken drives, I will keep them. <laughs> Just, I don't know. Save the quantum controller. Yes, I will. I don't gonna throw the, the quantum Bigfoots away. Diagnostics. Hey gamers, how are you doing? <laughs> Here we can see very nice food tree card. I'm not gonna keep it. Yeah, for the three cards, I will snap them in half in front of the camera. No, just joking. <laughs> okay. Smart is supported, but disabled. Oh. Let's start the test. You can make a nice clock of it. Yeah, the quantum Bigfoot clock. Then you can see on what time it will crash and burn and die and burn your home uh, down. So let's see what other drives we have. Here we have a Barracuda 80 gigabyte and that is a little bit too uh, big for uh, testing now. Here we have a 4 gigabyte uh, Western Digital. So we're gonna try that out also. Here's my favorite IDE hard drive, it's a 40 gigabyte Maxtor, it's very thin and it's a single platter 7200 7, RPM drive and the, the, these are really really fast IDE drives, very nice. We ha here we have a Hitachi uh, Desk Star, Dead Star uh, and it's a 40 gigabyte 7200 RPM, nice in some kind of hot swappable case. I'm not sure from what kind of system this is. Maybe, is this IBM purple? I don't know. Do you own any quantum fireball drives? Yes, I have some. Here we have a Maxtor 160 gigabyte IDE drive and a 80 gigabyte Western Digital a 120 gigabyte Western Digital an 80 gigabyte Western Digital and another 120 gigabyte Western Digital
Okay, the test is at 90% and the short test has passed. So we have a working Seagate Media List drive. Nice. So let's turn off the computer. Disconnect it. Do you have any dead drive? I have enough dead drives uh, and I just throw them out. Because this is a working drive now, we're gonna put on a sticker with OK. So I know which drives I already have tested. Let me see. Okay. And we have a working drive. Let's try this Western Digital uh, 4.3 uh, gigabyte drive. Because I like uh, this uh, Western Digital series. They are really reliable drives and nice for DOS gaming builds. Yes, the jumper is correct. How many voodoo cards do you have? I have so many voodoo cards, I lost the count. <laughs> John uh, Kena, where do you live? Because uh, sometimes I have dead IDE drives, but I think it's not worth it to uh, ship them around the world. Yes, the Western Digital has a uh, really specific uh, type of sound. But the uh, BIOS is not liking this drive. Hmm. <laughs> you can donate some voodoo cards to the Green Squad Foundation. <laughs> Yeah, let's see what there's wrong with this drive. Ah, oh, wait. Maybe we need to change it to single drive and remove the jumper. Yes, it's working now. HDD, Diagnostics, so if you have any retro questions just ask them and we can talk about it. The hard drive have been overtemped. Continue. Let's see uh, if it's a working drive. Do you like living in Holland? Yes, it is great here. I uh, don't come. Uh, I don't have complaints. Uh, or the the country is uh, nicely uh, ordered, and the roads are okay, and the people are nice. Uh, we have we have everything we want of course we complain a lot but we don't have a real reason to complain here in the netherlands do you, do you think that socket am2 separon computer is new for retro games 98 xp I think if you put XP on it and play games that uh, are uh, not that n not that new anymore, you can have, an, of course, a nice experience. But I prefer really the older hardware and the real experience, like we played games how it meant to be. Like if there's a micro stutter because the video card's not keeping up, 
that's part of the experience for me. But uh, AM2498, I think it's not working anymore. Okay, the test has passed. And the uh, Western Digital Drive was m really making the, the, the cool sounding hard drive noises. So great, we have another working drive. Now we have to work again. Okay, Dave, see you later. Let's put the jumper on it so we don't lose it. Uh, you ha you know there are places where you can go and they have scissors and they can cut hair with them like you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't uh, uh, shave my beard off because a friend of mine invited me to a beard festival. So I need a beard to go to the festival, I think. And last time uh, when I saw him was on a YouTube event and I just before that I shaved off my beard and then he was there with beard oil for me and I didn't have a beard. So that was a little bit, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, another working drive. Let's see what we have here. We have a 40 gigabyte uh, Maxstar. I think this also on 70 200 RPM drive. And let's see what we have here. We have a Seagate. And it is a 428 megabyte hard drive. This is a really old one. And I think if this drive works, we have a really nice hard drive for 486 build. But I'm not sure if this IDE standard of this drive will work on a more modern system. So I will try it out, but if this system will find errors on this drive, I will just put it uh, apart for later testing on 486 hardware. Because all the hard drives won't work properly with modern IDE controllers. Let's see, master and slave, master, slave, not AT compatible, master. There's a lot of jumper options. Let's see what we know, how it's set now. I think it's set all open. Let's try it out. I mean, you are probably like, what, 35? Yes, I'm 35, but you look like 55. <laughs> but all, also the, uh, the girls that I uh, really know for longer are complaining about my beard, so. <laughs> Let's see if this CK will work. It makes a lot of noise, but the right hard drive noise. And it is detected, yes. Hi Thomas, how are you doing? <laughs> no, he doesn't look like 55. I will try to be always between 20 and 30 in my life. That's my goal. I don't want to grow up. My current system is running on a Q6600 because of the cheapest stuff I can afford. I think the Q6600 is really a classic, uh, classic uh, Intel CPU that still performs uh, decent uh, nowadays. And the system you can see here, the Cooler Master ATC201, there's still my Q6600 inside. And I decided to never uh, sell that system and just keep it. I need to make a video about it uh, someday. <laughs> Vladimir, it, it will be okay. I, I think in June I will solve the beard issue. Because then the uh, beard festival is uh, done. Okay, this looks all great. Let's do... Uh-oh. <laughs> it, 
it directly gives an error on the short test. Let's do the long test. <laughs> okay, it just continues with uh, detecting errors. I will stop testing this hard drive and will try it out uh, someday in a 486 to see if it's really a hard drive errors or it's a controller error. So this drive is not uh, going to be thrown away, just on the stack, test it later in the right hardware. Okay, let's put a sticker on it. Uh, test in 486. So, too bad we don't, don't have it uh, working in this system, but let's see what we else we have. Okay, we have a Mac store hard drive. And I really hate the drives where you don't see where how big it is. That's so stupid. Uh, but it's from September uh, uh, 2004, so it's probably 80 or 120 or something like that. So I will try it out later. Let's see what we have here. This is a really shiny Fuji drive. It looks uh, pretty new. Oh, I think this is the drive from the Compaq, uh, uh, from the Strange Compaq uh, system with uh, spaceships inside. And oh no, this is a 20 gigabyte, but it's also from a Compaq. So let's try it out. Uh, jumper settings, master. Yes, it's correct. For a truck driver you must be doing very well in in retro computers which can be very expensive. Good job Singapore. Yeah, but I don't spend much money on retro parts. I just try to get them for free or I get so much for free or from them search that I don't need to spend much money on it. I only buy very specific uh, parts like Roland uh, MIDI hardware and stuff like that. Okay, hard drive diagnostics fail. Let's see what the test will say. Okay. Diagnostics. Uh, I need to send a uh, message to somebody. Uh, be, uh, I almost forgot. Okay, yes, this is a short test, smart trip detected, okay, uh, we gonna say this drive is dead. Too bad this drive is not working. Let's see what else we have. We have a Barracuda 60 gigabyte and another Barracuda 60 gigabyte. Uh, we can also try out some laptop hard drives. This is a uh, Seagate one uh, 
This is CK to 100 uh, gigabyte IDE uh, and 8.4 gigabyte IDE. And here I have a converter cable with the power supply. So let's connect the drive. Okay, there's only one way to connect it, that's good, because there's also the power supply. Uh. Okay, let's connect it. Can you show the middle case on the wall side in the corner? Which uh, the you mean under the Asus Terminator build? That is the same case as the Dual Pentium Pro uh, system. Do you have a USB flash drive with tools for testing and using with computers? What do you recommend me? I just used the ultimate boot CD and I just burn it on a CD and then CD drive that works for me and for the old computers. Okay, it's not detecting the Toshiba hard drive. Let me see if there are jumper settings. Oh wait, it's a 60 gigabyte hard drive and 8.4 when you use less cylinders hmm I don't see why it's let's try another drive ah, I hate this IDE cable Okay, what do we have here? Okay, we have a SATA hard drive. It's where 160 gigabyte. Nice. Two other SATA drives, 80 gigabytes, 60 gigabytes, and an 80 gigabyte SATA. These are nice boot drives in rate uh, uh, one for a file server. Uh, 120 gigabytes uh, what do we have here another 60 gigabytes I only have big drives <laughs> another 60 gigabyte and we have a um, 20 gigabyte let's try this one out No lag here, lag. Okay. Stream is fine here. Yeah, my I, I don't still have ADSL. I'm waiting on uh, fiber, but they are not uh, not that fast with it. But I like the internet provider where I am now and I rather not switch to a different internet provider, but the uh, speed is really slow here. Hmm. Why doesn't go this this cable doesn't want to go on the drive? So let's see if it's working. Stream keeps dropping to 240p for me. Hmm. Okay, the hard drive is detected. No, uh, no fiber yet. I really want fiber here, but <laughs> you air <laughs> now. No, I, I, I need fiber in my life, and I need an airco in my studio. 
What is your opinion on the infamous GeForce FX series cards and do you collect them? No, I don't collect them and I don't have an opinion on them because I think they are too new for what I like to collect. Let's see if this drive is working. Okay, I cut all the old hard drives just from uh, uh, people that give me drives or uh, systems that I take apart and I was and in this video we just gonna try uh, all kinds of hardware to see if it's working and while I'm doing that we just gonna chat and uh, uh, talk about old computers of course. Yes, I'm uh, I'm liking more the 90s stuff because I think after 2002 the computer market was not that interesting anymore. Before that there were m much more brands, much more options. Okay, let's see. Okay, over temp. That is pretty normal in a laptop. My first PC had a Celeron 300 slot 1 and a Riva TNT 2 both low end at the time yeah but the Celeron 300A was pretty good when you overclocked it and the TNT 2 if it was the real TNT 2 not the M64 then it also was a really decent card and it was pretty good for gaming Hi Victor, I'm building a retro PC with an Asus Cubix uh, Mo Mobo. I'm planning to match it with a Pentium 3 1 keycard, but I don't know which video card to use. Will GeForce 3 Ti 200 will be okay or too overkill? I think a GeForce 3 or a GeForce 2 will uh, work great. Or of course a Fudu 5 if you can find one for a decent price. I think that are the better options for a uh, system like that. And the nice thing about the Cubix motherboard is it supports 512 MB SD RAM sticks. So you can easily go to 1 or 2 GB memory on it. Okay, the short test has passed about this hard drive. So we have a working 20 GB hard drive. And most times if I really want to use a specific drive for a build. I do a longer test to see if it's really stable in the long term. So we're gonna put a sticker on it with OK. <laughs> I don't think it was Celeron 300A because it didn't have level 2 cache. Oh no, you had the shitty Celeron. The the one without cache, which still can be overclocked, but it was just not performing, and I think that was a really bad step of Intel to make them without cache. I have an old IBM laptop with a Pentium 3, 128 gigabytes memory, and an AT Rage Pro. Nice. You can play some uh or uh games on it like SimCity or or 2D, 2D games or Red Alert. Let's try out some video cards now because I want to know if this Riva TNT will work because they are really nice gaming cards. And the current test card, let me see what I put in, it's a PCI card. It's a Diamond uh, Stealth 64 video with an S3 Fission uh, chip. It's a uh, decent card. Okay, let's put it in the HP slot. Connect the monitor. Nice, Diamond Viper TNT. I just got a Toshiba Tecra for free. Nice, you did a uh, nice deal. 
screen quality is uh, fine here in 1080p good 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 I should shouldn't have given away my Fudo 3 2000 PCI a long time ago oh no <laughs> the PCI versions of the Fudo 3's are harder to find but this video card is working nice so also we gonna put a sticker on it if there's room on the card oh here's a nice uh, spot for the sticker Let's see, we had some other video cards, some much more modern cards, so I'm not sure if they will work in this motherboard. Okay, this card won't work in this motherboard, but because that's HP 2 times and this HP 8 times, so we can't test this uh, uh, card, but let me see what it is. Okay, it's an uh, NVIDIA 6600. So it's a pretty fast card with 256 megabyte of memory. And of course, nice connections on it. So I need to find some more modern hardware to try out this card. But I think this card will be uh, working uh, in this motherboard for testing. Let me see what it is. Uh, it's an uh, Asus V9520 video with 120 megabytes of memory. So I'm not sure which uh, which chipset it is. So if you uh, can, someone please look it up. An Asus V9520 video, and let me know which chip this is. Now it's the HP 6600, <laughs> Windows 98 gaming will blazing fast on it. Yes it will, it's a pretty nice uh, card. Let's see if this uh, card will work. Oh wait, I only have VGA here. Uh, let me see. A digital cable. Now I need some power. Let's see if this will work. Okay, I think this video card is not compatible with this old motherboard. So I will also try it in a uh, different system because this is not working. remove the card what phone 
what what phone do you use? I use a Nokia 6 and it's a pretty nice uh, a mid-range uh, phone and it is not that cheap. I think I paid 235 euros for it and it does everything I wanted to do. Let's try out this uh, ISA VGA card. It's a Trident. I'm not sure if this will work on this motherboard, but we can always try it out. And this is a nice card for 286 or 386. Nice, one megabyte of memory and we have a working ISA video card. And we're gonna put a sticker on it. Drop the PC on the ground. Why? <laughs> I have Nokia 6, little brother Nokia 5, them create foam for its price and it's already Oreo 8.1. Yes, it's uh, the Nokia uh, phones are really up to date with the software and the updates. It's, uh, they, are, uh, they are decent uh, telephones and really cheap. My phone is Galaxy S4, it needs replacement. Yeah, just look up the Nokia series, they are pretty decent nowadays. And they just use Android and not Windows Phone anymore. And Windows Phone is nice, but there are no apps for it. Let me see if we have some more video cards in this stack. We have lots of memory. No, we don't have other video cards, so let's put back the diamond stealth. I think we're gonna try out this max for 40 gigabytes, because I want to know if this is a working drive. And I think someone has run it in the server because it's here says R17 server 005. Let me see the jumpers. Wait, we need a jumper on it. My Packard Bell has a sing lapse to do to the accelerator. Nice, which Packard Bell do you have? Because I have one Packard Bell motherboard, but not the machine anymore. And the motherboard has a 3DFX Fudu uh, 3 1008 megabytes on board. That's probably the worst idea I ever heard running a Maxter in a server. I have seen more self-built servers with Maxor Drive, so it's not that strange. Why don't we have video now? Hmm. What did I break? Uh oh. Oh no. This is the issue with old hardware. It randomly fails on you. <laughs> I 
You killed the PC. No, it's just, uh, it's just normal. Maybe it still thinks it's on the ISA bus. So let's try out an HP card. Ah, that's better. Wait, we need to power the hard drive again. Love this kind of troubleshooting on old hardware. Remember the times it took to get things to work. <laughs> Yes, sometimes uh, hardware uh, acts really strange. Why is it not detecting the hard drive? Maybe I've put too much jumpers on it. Throw a brick at the PC. No, 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 no. We don't gonna destroy it. I think I put the uh, jumper on the wrong position. And of course I use some jumper without notches so it's really hard to get it off. <laughs> Whoops. You spin set, yeah, let's see where do I have my tool set with a pin set. I think in my other room, so <laughs> this also works, a screwdriver, which is small enough. Okay, it doesn't detect the hard drive. Let me see what is wrong with this drive. Bear, slave, master. Maybe the drive is dead because they used it in a server and run it way too long. That can happen. This system doesn't like this drive. Yeah, I found one Bigfoot. We tested it uh, at the start of the stream and uh, it's broken. <laughs> 
Okay. I think this Maxter doesn't like uh, like to be alive anymore. Maybe try it as the slave drive on the the cable with the CD-ROM player. Oh, and never hang your hard drive on the cable in your computer. That's a terrible idea. What will you choose between TNT2 and RAID 120 Pro? I will choose TNT2 because I don't really like the old AT cards and the TNT is really great so my choice will be an NVIDIA Riva TNT2 but not the M64 because I don't like them and I think this uh, Maxtor hard drive is also dead love your channel thanks so then you need to Okay, this Maxter is dead. But no worries, I have uh, more than one of these drives and uh, I have enough working drives. And they are not really rare, so they uh, pop up uh, from time to time. I have a T uh, TNT 2 Ultra 32 megabyte with uh, VR classes, so that's a really nice card. Okay, maybe we can now try out this CD-ROM drives. So let's see if I take this cable. Wait first remove the ultimate boot CD okay we have a 12 speed Toshiba CD-ROM player and I really like this Toshiba drives and this one is not yellowed so I hope this is a working drive uh, let's see the jumpers Set it to master. That sound. Really awesome uh, old school sound. Okay, the Toshiba drives detected. And it reset the BIOS to uh, the default, so I need to have it on CD ROM boot. Okay, 
CD ROM, yes. Let's see if it will uh, boot up the ultimate boot CD, then, because then we have a working drive. Yes, we have a working uh, Toshiba drive, so let's put a sticker on it. Okay, let's see what we have here. We have an, uh, a 52 speed uh, open drive. Let's set the uh, jumper to master. It won't open. Maybe the magnet uh, is sticking here on the drive. You'll hear that it is making an, an, a noise that it wants to open, but it's not getting, it's not working. Let me check the stream status. Okay, everything looks fine. Nice. Drop it in the recycle bin. Yeah, use paper clip to open it. I will just dump this drive because I have enough CD-ROM drives, so I'm not gonna bother with uh, fixing this one. But for the uh, 1998 Dream Build, I also had a 40-speed drive, and that was having problems also with opening. But if you smash it on the top the magnetic uh, sticking of the drive uh, centering system then release it and then it opens so I made a spacer in that drive that it opens but this is not worth uh, fixing it because the 52 speeds I think they are a bit too fast they spin on too much RPM and they shatter CDs earlier than a slower speed drive Okay, here we have another 12 speed drive and this is an, let me see the brand, an, OG, an Delta OGC, so it's a Delta drive. Let's put the jumper on master. And 12 speed drives are nice drives for a Pentium 1 build. Okay, it opens without noise. <laughs> That's the quad speed. That's a good idea. And Dave, I uh well you were working, so you're back. <laughs> Disk boot failure. Why? Uh oh. I think this drive has some issues. Open please. 
Give back my CD. Uh oh. How is your updrawn server with 16 gigabyte DDR ROM doing? It's doing uh, okay. I'm just <laughs> don't do much with it. But if you have great ideas to do a uh, video uh, again on that machine, let me know. Maybe we can do something more with it. But it is still uh, standing in my room. Okay, this Delta drive has issues. And it's not... It's a bit yellow. It's a bit yellowed, so... I think I will just uh, throw it away. Is that an Hasset screwdriver there? Yes, it's an Hasset uh, screwdriver. And I really like the brand Hasset. It's really quality uh, tools. German engineering. Let me see what we have here. Okay, we have a uh, compact drive, but it is a Samsung SC148. So I think it's a 48 speed uh, compact drive. From Samsung, of course. So let's try this unit out. Set the jumper to master. Please open. <laughs> yeah, but the problem with the Optron server is it is so uh, it's a one use server, so it's pretty hard to find a video card uh, that will fit. Okay, I think uh, we have a dead compact drive. But uh, CD-ROM drives are just not the most reliable uh, old computer hardware. But I have some more drives. And they are here, so... This, this LG is working because I'm testing it out with uh, this set of uh, hardware. So this uh, doesn't have to be tested. We have a Philips drive. We have a very nice quad speed drive. Oh, I see the Philips drive has some damage on it. We have an an Belgium drive. I think it's an oh, it's also a Philips drive. I think it's a CD writer. And we have a light on drive, also 52 speed, which is already on master. Just open the top and clean the lens. What's it? Oh, here's my CD. Okay, it's detecting. Don't like the light on. I like I like the style of the buttons here. It's, I think it's yeah. I I don't know. I I like this style. It's better than. This style, boot from Atapi CD-ROM, it's making a lot of screaming noise. You can do it, you can do it. This boot failure, what? 
What's wrong? Let's uh, try it again. Vladimir, just stay here, drink some water. You don't need beer and cigarettes in your life. It's making screaming noises. So I'm not sure if this uh, drive is working. Yeah, I think the Optron server will be a nice game server. And this light on drive uh, is also uh, not not so good anymore. So we are not uh, running a uh, uh, lucky with CD-ROM drive. So let's see this Philips, and it is a CDD. 3801 Nice, I hope this drive works because it's a nice older uh, CD writer But I think the best uh, combination in a build is an uh, an uh, Pioneer slot in DVD drive together with an uh, Plexor CD writer. That's my favorite combination. Please, accept the CD. What? <laughs> Stupid drive. Stupid drive. What the fuck are you thinking? Oh wait, I can't say that, because then my stream will be monetized. Please accept the CD. Yes, yes, it looks like it's accepting it. Let's reboot the system and I hope it doesn't throw the CD out. When it will throw it out, I will throw the drive away. Okay, the drive is working! After he trolled me. Okay, let's try when I open and close it, what it does do. Okay, I think we have a working drive, it was just trolling me. Let's remove the CD and then we can test this drive. And this drive is really awesome. Because this drive is a Mitsumi Quad Speed, it's a CRMC FX400E. Okay, it's already on master. And if this drive is working, I'm gonna put it in a 486 build. Okay, it is detected an FX400E. Nice! <laughs> From all the drives, the oldest drive is working the best. So, quality stuff.
Nice. We have a working uh, four-speed uh, IDE drive. So it deserves this uh, nice little sticker. Take the problematic drives and need a drive them in a box and send them my way. Yeah, we can uh, arrange something like that. So, what are your plans with uh, uh, with the uh, old uh, CD-ROM drive? What are you gonna make with them? Okay, let's try out this Philips drive, but as you can see here, it uh, has some damage. It's The top is bended and the plastic is broken. So, and here it's bulging out. So in the state that's, that is it now, I don't really like it because it's damaged, but we can always try it out and see if it works. But I don't think I gonna keep this drive in my collection just because it just don't look that great anymore. So let's see cable. It doesn't sound that great because it's making a sound like bang. So maybe it's stuck. Oh, it's all. I think the drive tray is stuck because of the the dent here. Okay, the plastic was holding the drive. I'm not damaging it even more, but okay. Let's try it out with a CD. Reset the system. Okay, the drive is working, but I'm not gonna keep it because it's just too damaged. And I, when I built a system, I have more than enough drives without damage. So I rather use a drive without damage instead of a damaged drive. Great. Okay, take the CD out. Okay, we have uh, f we have three working drives and five broken drives. So, yeah, CD-ROM drives are not that reliable. Nice, we have 58, uh, 58 people watching. I think we gonna try out some special hardware if it fits in this case. So, here we have a compact uh, box. And if we open it, 
you can see we have an MVP workstation graphics controller and with a very big cable on it and I'm not sure if it will fit in this case hmm let's remove this big cable and if you can see there are four outputs so this is a um, special card and it looks like a SCSI connector but that is just a VGA output and we here we have an SD third and here we have another SD third so this is a dual head card and with a daughter board on top of it you can make a uh, quad uh, head card but I don't have the daughter board but I like to know if this card is working so let's see if we can fit it in the system and I have all the drivers and the papers of it so it's a complete uh, card only the daughter board is missing Okay, it's too long, but I think we need to remove this bracket and then we can fit it in this system. And it looks like this card is brand new because there's not a single spot of dust on it. Nice. Let's see if it will fit now. And there are no contact points here, so if I slide it here in the metal rails, it won't short out. Okay, it fits in the system, but <laughs> there is not a single uh, millimeter left. So here we have the cable. Okay, they are numbered. So this is the A. Let's connect it. So let's try it out and I hope the motherboard uh, does like the PCI cards uh, this time. Yes, it's working. Oh, the brand of the board is STB. So that is the same factory that later built the Fudu 5 and the Fudu 4 cards. Nice, we have a working video card. I now need to find the daughter board. I already uh, sent an email to a company that has the board on stock but with no price. And I really uh, are gonna try if they can sponsor me the card. So uh, I will uh, say their name of course in the video. But I don't want to pay a lot of money for a simple card that is completely obsolete. But if they can give it to me and I can just give uh, their website some attention and 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 show them where you can get the old parts and how that works so maybe that that will work so that is my plan but they didn't respond uh, yet back with a price so I need to uh, uh, ask them again for a price and then I will say I want to use it on YouTube what was the card model again uh, it is an uh, wait. It is an 
MVP Workstation Graphics Controller from Compaq. And I think the daughter board is the MPV Workstation Graphics daughter board. Let me see if we have a picture of the daughter board. And you co can configure, uh, and you, you can uh, use this card in Windows NT 4.0, and you can configure the mod. You can, and you can configure the monitors in a setup like this or in a setup like that. And I'm very lucky that I have the driver disc. And uh, it, uh, the copyright is from 1997. So this is a really nice car to, uh, to have it running in a Windows NT system. And I don't think uh, Windows NT supports dual monitor out of the box. What kind of PC are you testing now? I just join the live stream uh, I'm using an uh, old Asus P2B with a Pentium 2 350 and with some random SD RAM and it is just my testing system to try out cards uh, which I never have had in the other system so I uh, uh, so I like to have a testing system so I don't break uh, uh, good hardware so sometimes my testing system also will break uh, but I then just uh, swap out the motherboard for another motherboard with which have already some issues so let's remove this card and put it back in the box because it's great that it is working and we need to find the daughter board for this card because I want to try this one in uh, quad monitor setup because that is fun okay let's put back the bracket I only for I think it was like this but I forget how it was <laughs> I like this screwdriver, it's very small. I, I bought this screwdriver to work on the old computer speakers because the, uh, the screws are very deep in the speakers and with this uh, screwdriver I can reach them. Okay, let's put it back in the box. So let's see. Do we have an? Do we have questions? Because uh, question: Are you married? No, I'm single. Mm, <laughs> size does matter. Yeah, the card is pretty big, and I think it's a really nice card for a wi uh, Windows NT uh, build. Or maybe if I uh, I have a Pentium. Uh, Pentium 200, uh, Pentium Pro 200 board. Maybe it's a nice video card for a board like that. And then in a nice little AT mini tower, and then a big board, and a and then fast Pentium Pro. That that can be fun. Wait, is your username Pentium 4? <laughs> nice. Uh. Yes, old multi-head cards are rare indeed. Yes, 
Uh, and the, the cheaper options for multi-head cards are the more modern Matrox cards. What kind of PC are you testing now? Oh yeah, I already answered that. So, do we have uh, questions? I like to answer them. I have a Socket T Pentium 4. Nice. I don't do much with Pentium 4s myself. Would you recommend a slot 1 Pentium 2 for retro gaming? Yes, of course. I think slot 2 uh, or slot 1 uh, Pentium 2s are really great. And also uh, the early Pentium 3 slot 1s are also very nice. Just with a full uh, graphics card of a Matrix G400 uh, with a TNT, you can build a really nice, good performing uh, retro system. But don't play two new games because they don't perform uh, that well on the board. Mm. Do you have any 8088 PCs? No, not yet. I think I have an 8086, but I still need to try it out, but not an 8088. But I had one as a kid. I find you a Pentium uh, Pro board. Nice. Please have a dual Pentium Pro board because <laughs> I have the the two Pentium Pro 200 megahertz blacktops that I really like to try out. And I prefer an AT or an ATX. I I think an AT Pentium Pro is I think that's more special. So yeah, I prefer I think an AT uh, Pentium Pro. You can find 90s dating sites to find your soulmate. Yeah, but if I find a nice girl on a 90s dating site, she's now 20 years older. And I'm not sure <laughs> if that is an... <laughs> no, no, that's not good. <laughs> nice, then my Pentium 3600 is slot 1 too. Yeah, a Pentium 3600 is a very nice... Uh, CPU, it's a nice balance in speed and yeah Even the worst Pentium 2 is still pretty good the 233 makers one is notably faster than a Pentium uh, MX. Yes, because uh, The Pentium 2 is based of the Pentium Pro so it's just like a Pentium Pro on higher clock speeds with MMX So that's a really nice uh, CPU and the nice thing about the most Pentium 2 233 Pentium 2 233 is that uh, that the multiplier is unlocked, so you can run them probably on 300 megahertz without problems, and they don't run hot, hot so you don't need uh, a big cooling. The Amstrad is now 8088. The Amstrad PPC 640 was a NEC V30 CPU running at 8 megahertz. How rare is an Asus P40? I got one. I don't know. In the Netherlands it's not that rare. My retro gaming PC is a Pentium 4 with a Fulu 3. I think in an, I, uh, it's a very fast CPU for a Fulu 3. But I think if I had a system like that I would put in an, a faster video card. I have bad luck. I uh, I only have one HP card and the only HP motherboard, so I don't. Oh, but you will find HP. It's not that uh, not, not that strange. What do you think about the uh, Intel 8008? I don't have one. I never used one, so I'm not sure. And it's very old. Nice, you have a lot of Pentium 4 motherboards. Nice. The Socket 478 was a great design. Yeah, but the coolers were a bit, uh, bit s strange. Uh, I don't like the Intel stock coolers for 478. Do you have any old laptops? I only have the, uh, the. Uh, the Amstrad PPC 640, but that's not a laptop, but more portable. 
but I have one old laptop, but I was trying to have the chat running on that, but then the browser was not up to date, and that's an old IBM. Let me take it. I have this 2005 IBM, what is it? It's an, I think it was an X40, where the, hmm, let me open it. Okay, yes, it is an IBM X40, and it is a very nice IBM ThinkPad. And this is an, like an, an, an predecessor from a netbook. So it was an, this is a Pentium, Pentium M 1.4 gigahertz. So it's a very fast uh, Pentium 3 chip with a lot of, uh, with a, a lot of cache. And it has 100, one and a half gigabyte of memory or maybe 125. And it is running uh, Linux and a 40, a uh, gigabyte small hard drive and it's a pretty decent machine but only my browser is not up to date anymore so I need to update the browser a bit more so I can have the chat on this machine instead of my mobile phone but this ThinkPad is really cool and what I like is that you can put a screen flat like this and it has a VGA output and USB and and a uh, gigabyte internet, uh, gigabyte network, uh, memory card reader here, sound, uh, some expansion cards here, modem inside. I have the big battery here, and I put some uh, stickers on it to make it uh, nicer, <laughs> like uh, we stream porn, <laughs> and awesome retro, and dance for digital rights. So this is my uh, hacker laptop and leak more dogs. <laughs> I like this machine and I prefer it a lot more over my other uh, simple laptop. I have the same model of ThinkPad, nice. Do you also have it with a maxed out memory because this one has the maxed out memory. And also this machine comes out of a dumpster. Do you know that the Intel 586 is the real name for the first Pentium? Yeah, but they needed to have an, they changed the name because I think you can't have uh, naming rights on a number. So, and because AMD and Cyrix all were using 486, they needed to have a branding. So that's why they came up with the Pentium branding. So the other companies couldn't use the name Pentium and they uh, 486 was open to use and that's why they changed it to uh, Pentium. How big is the difference, how big of a difference is there between a copper mine, Pentium 3, 100 megahertz, 133? Yeah, just the, uh, the memory speed on the one to 133 megahertz is much faster. Yeah, much 30% faster. So you have uh, more memory bandwidth. And for the rest, they perform the same. Only the memory is faster. Yeah, it's all marketing. Yeah, but also brand protection and So do we have even more questions? Otherwise I think I gonna stop this stream because I think I will go to uh, Utrecht tonight to the awesome retro uh, gaming space. Uh, HP net server with Pentium 2, uh, two Pentium 3s, 1266, server works, plates. Nice. Is it a tower or a um, rack mount? And where is it located? 50 euros, that's way too much money. I mean, of course, it's a nice server, but a tower. 
but it's not worth more than 25 euros I think and probably uh, machines like that can be also in dumpsters with the same configuration but uh, Dr. Drag sent me the link on uh, on uh, on Facebook, uh, I will take a look on it. Uh, where should I s message you so we can arrange the drive shipping? Uh, uh, send me a Facebook message or send me a message through YouTube and then we can get in contact and I probably have some more drives. Uh, do you want to call DDR2 PCs or I, uh, my interest is, uh, I think a little, uh, a bit just up to, uh, SD RAM and not even DDR1. I have some, but it's not in the planning to do that, to do a lot with that. But I have a lot of DDR1 2 gigabyte uh, server modules, so I have DDR1. Almere, nice. Oh, with with Almere, I can always send uh, <laughs> my local contact there, Dave Panning. <laughs> but I don't gonna pay that much money for a system like that. But I think it's nice here on the channel to do some server server videos with nice hardware. So, okay, see you later, Vladimir. Take care. DDR2 is still not retro to me. No, DDR2 is not really retro. I think a lot of people still use DDR2. I have three SD RAM sticks. I think I have 300 SD RAM sticks. Hmm. <laughs> So, thank you all for watching this live stream. Of course, hit that and smash that like button on the live stream because more likes is better. <laughs> and if you and if you made it this far in the live stream and you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel because we do a lot with old computers and and testing it and making builds and dumpster machines i think you will like it thanks for the stream it was fun yes it was fun talking to you and testing things out and i think i will do more live streams in the future just uh uh gonna do uh gonna see how i want to do with the chat because i don't like the chatting on my phone. Uh, I want to have a screen with the chat so it's easier to read. <laughs> what are you going to eat tonight? I don't know. They gonna make uh, in the awesome space. They gonna make food, and I sent a message. Oh, I will. Uh, I want to have food too. So it's a surprise. I eat a lot of uh, stuff, so it will probably fine. And they made uh, make healthy food. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for the watching, of course. I got a Commodore PC23 and it has a DB15 connector, but I can't get it to show any pic with a TFT screen. Do I need a CRT? Uh, I think and this TFT is very uh, nice with accepting all kinds of signals. So maybe a different TFT screen will work. But make sh I'm not sure if you need a special monitor for the system. Have a great night there, or even better, saying in Dutch. Goedenavond. <laughs> no, I don't gonna talk Dutch here. <laughs> okay, thanks all for watching. I gonna stop the stream. And we did a stream for one hour and 45 minutes. Nice. Okay, this stream will stop in three, two, one. <laughs>